Des and Kelly. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you so much for being here. It's exciting. This is the first time we've done this as a team. Change of partners. Oh, and uh, I'm very excited about that. You know, you might wonder why somebody gets uh, involved in bird watching, and for me, it was not a matter of choice. I was forced <laughs> as a child before I had any part of the decision making. They'd use this as a as decoys. They'd send us out in the, in the muddy flats and get us to flush the birds. Where would I go out? <laughs> so, and uh, you know, and I, and I love bird watching. And, and we got mom was she started it when we did it in Kansas. And, uh, I was probably in about sixth grade or seventh grade, and, and we uh, and we enjoyed it then. But then I kind of got a little complacent about it, and, and, uh, and until I got into my twenties. And suddenly started realizing what a beautiful thing this was, what a wonderful ongoing uh, hobby this could be. And I got reinvigorated and, and now, and my wife and I, who's, my wife's on a trip right now, she'd probably be joining us as well, Donna. Um, we just, it's a big part of our lives. And we do programs for children, uh, constantly in the public schools. And uh, we really enjoy that, mostly third and fourth graders. So, um, don't do a lot of adult programming, but see if I can adapt to that with mom's help. Um, we'll just she'll pitch in whatever. Now, I one thing I know for sure is that this is a pretty sophisticated audience, and that many of you. Well, I know that mo most everybody in here is, is pretty mindful of the birds and keeping an eye on the birds, and uh, so some of this will be under your level, so, and hopefully you'll, you'll learn some things, but. In bird watching, of course, we all have the opportunity to go out on field trips and, and, and get into serious bird watching, trying to find woodland birds and field birds and water birds and shore birds and all that. Now, we can't possibly tackle that in a class of this duration. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to target backyard birds. We are, we're going to keep it simple. We'll try as hard as we can. It's, this li the list of backyard birds is even a little blurry. I mean, is a crow a backyard bird? Is a broadwing hawk a black? You see a hawk in your yard? Is it a backyard bird? I, we'll have to we have to define the line somewhere. Right. And also, I know that we have very mixed habitats. Some of you live like I live in Central Fayetteville, uh, very very tightly wooded, lots and lots of invasives, you know, uh, honeysuckles and, and privets, and, and so there's lots of hiding places. So I get a, a certain assortment of birds. Uh, Mom, on the other hand, her house is, is in more of a suburb setting, at least the front of the house is. So she's got a wide open yard with a lawn, and, uh, and she gets another assortment of birds. And so I'm, I'm sure, and some of you might even be rural. You might have a pond. You might have a, a, a big field. So that's going to give another assortment of birds. Uh, somehow or another, there is a universal list that we all share. And uh, that's what we're going to try to focus on. We do have a nest here. We'll, when we have a nest, uh, I'll try to talk about the song. Uh, we're going we're to talk about when the bird lives here, trying to demystify some of those things, how they, uh, what, what goes on in the winter, what goes on in the summer, uh, what their migratory pattern is, what they eat, um, what their nest looks like if we have it. Um, if anybody has a story to share. That's true. And, uh, so, you know, I think uh, we thought maybe the best way to start would be to, um, is, by the way, I, I wanted to mention a little bit more about backyard birds, why I think they're so important, and sometimes overlooked by people who are bird watchers, you know, uh, because you, you can get into the bird watching thing and it, it becomes this kind of a, a, a acquisition <coughs> of a list, you know. But what happens in here, you know, we have to admit, no, no matter how average you are as a bird watcher, 90% of your bird watching is looking out your kitchen window, you know, and seeing your feeders, and seeing what's going on out there. And there's so much to learn about that, just that part. I never get tired of that. It just never, it's like, we don't have a television in our house, but I would joke that that is my television. I just watch that continually, and I never get tired of it. And it's always changing. Well, I was sitting on the front porch waiting for somebody, and, and I'd rather sit in the house, I sat on the front porch. And in the next 15 minutes, 
I had almost 20 species of birds that had come to the field that I heard from. And it's just, and it's only because I was watching and moving that they were there every day that I didn't realize I was looking so that few in that short time. So maybe the, the, a good way to start it. You notice up here on these boards, um, we have three categories, and summer and winter, and then all year. Now there's a good bunch of these birds that are here all year. And um, so, but we thought it would be helpful to you if we, possibly helpful, if we could make a list and put them in the right place. And I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can give us a list. So um, I'm, I'm thinking, let's just start. There's, good, there's a certain little list of birds that are going to be in all of our yards. Robin. Robin. Okay, the American Robin. That's all year. Cardinal. We're going to go back and talk more specifically. Cardinal. 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 Slow down. Our scribe. Our sparrow. Okay, so let me uh, make sure we get these in the right room. House sparrow, which is the English sparrow. Goldfinch. Goldfinch, that's your round. Purple finch. Purple finch, I'm going to leave off because the purple finch is very, very not common and uh, is very difficult to identify. And just for our purposes today, we'll leave it alone. House finch. House finch. Yeah, house finch. Wren. Wrens, okay. Which wrens do we have? The Carolina. And winter wren. We have, we have winter wren. I'm not going to use for backyard birds so much. But that's a good one. What other winter wren do we have? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Summer. What? I'm sorry. What other summer wren do we have? House wren. House wren. So. Oh. <laughs> Mary, I guess you look like Vanna Link. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I used to do this for Paige. I would always say, at least he doesn't make me wear a tutu. Well, we all get on the mall. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Okay, now let's we got we still got a ways to go. Um, I heard somebody say uh, um, uh, the, uh, the duck. Blue Jay. Okay, Blue Jay and, uh, and Morning Duck. Brown Very good. Actually, it's the Carolina chickadee here. There's a lot of confusion about that. The black cap chickadee and the Carolina chickadee are pretty much identical, only known by their song. Uh, and in this region, it's, it's, the, it's the Carolina chickadee. Sorry? The collared dove, that's an invasive, yeah, that's a good one. Um, it's, it is all year, I, I guess it's a, I think it's just so rare that when we get them in our theater. They're moving yeah. in, they're moving in, I imagine they're, they're, they're all the white the, the white breasted head. The white, very good, the white breasted nut head. Now, what is the nut hatch that we might see in the winter? Red breasted. Red breasted. Is that the same as a red neck? The ring neck dove and the collar dove is the. How about the hummingbirds? That's, okay, that's another, that'd be a summer. Uh, sometimes winter. Woodpeckers? And we haven't even touched the woodpeckers yet. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter. That's right. That's not bad. So, um, yeah, I might, is there another kid I can keep up with? That was the point. But you all said something. Honeybird. Somebody said something. Ruby. 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 That's the Carolina chicken. We're going to do woodpeckers. Woodpeckers. What do we have for woodpeckers? Yeah. Yeah. Red belly. Red belly. Parrot. Red belly. Okay. Uh, thank you. The cat bird. Yeah. What is the summer? Summer. That's, oh. that's Kelly's favorite. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put cat bird on summer? <laughs> <laughs> Gillian. 
Mockingbird. Oh. <laughs> what other, what other, uh, there's one other woodpecker I want to put on that list. Very. That's right, the, like the northern, northern flicker. Oh, you might find a Oh, that sounds like almost like wina wina. It sounds more like a woodpecker. Wicka 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 wicka. Like wicka 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 wicka. That's a that's a that's a pileated woodpecker. Maybe. Wicka 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 wicka. Excuse me. Yeah. Could y'all please speak a little louder? And then I've had two requests for this sheet that you hand out. Do you have any more? Yeah. yeah, and anybody who can't hear also could come up closer because we have some seats up here. I, I didn't have one of these for everybody. Brown brush. Oh, okay. If somebody would cut off the air, we could hear better. It's That's nice and cool idea. outside. <laughs> 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 yeah, Kelly, we go to the Blue, Bluebird. The bluebird is the bluebird is all year round, but they're they're in the summertime they're a lot more visible, and they're very drab in the wintertime. Did they go bunting? I, I'm not sure about that as a backyard bird. You know, it is. It is. And, and of course, that would be a summer bird. No, we winter too.
the epidonia, the, the other one here, but yeah, the cedar wax ring is certainly, now the cedar wax ring again is all year long, but uh, it's, winter is when we associate it in our backyards. Yeah, so I don't think the Yeah, right, Now, I, I, I'm sure there's more, we can keep going, and I'm sure we may add a couple more here. Um, but I'm happy with this as a starting place. So, now what I want to do is I want to talk about these birds and get a little more specific about it. Because I, I, obviously, you're aware of most of these birds. I don't have a PowerPoint thing today because I hate computers and all that junk. And, and I, I, I wish everybody had a bird book in there again. I could just make you all look them up. But I do have a few pictures uh, that we use with children that we may drag some of them out. Um, but just, first of all, let's start with something simple. Let's start with, um, how about, how about let's talk with the robin? Um, the robin is something that everybody knows about, but there, there's more to it than meets the eye. Um, I do have a robin's nest, and after the program, you're welcome to come up and look closely. The robin's nest is uh, famous for its uh, ingredients of sticks, mud, and grass. And then also it improvises, and this one has plenty of improvisation with a little Easter egg basket fuzz and paper towels and, and uh, there's a plastic sheet in there. It's kind of a hodgepodge. You might tell them where you got these other Most of these came from Joe Neal. And uh, he very generously donated his collection to Don and I to use in schools. And then, so, and then Doug James. And Doug James has helped too. Yeah. And people give me that sometimes. And Doug James recently uh, identified some of them for me as best he could. And, uh, and so we have an expanded. By, by the way, you know, we use these for the classroom, and, and this is typical in a bird book, a range map. And the, the range map, I, I just can't emphasize how important the range map is. That's really, to me, that's the first thing I look at in a bird book. Does this bird live here? Mm -hmm. uh, this shows in the three colors, the red being summer, uh, purple being all year long, and then the blue being the, the winter only. And so, obviously, Arkansas is in a year-long range. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about with the robin that many of us might not understand is that it's not a migratory bird, but it does move around. And we, the robins that you have in your yard right now are not going to be here in the winter. You have a different population. And they may be from some neighboring state. They may be very close by Arkansas. But rot, that their behavior in the summer and in the winter is completely different. In the summer, they, they uh, they pair up, they're doing their nesting, uh, and they're feeding on the ground. They're eating insects, they're eating worms, as we know <coughs> revolves are. But in the, in the, in the wintertime, they band together in small flocks. And there'll be 20 or you know, 15 robins together, and, they, and they're, what they're eating is what? Berries. Berries. They turn into berry eaters in the wintertime. And if you really want to have robins in your yard, one of my favorite uh, things in my yard is, is my water bath. I have a nice little heated water bath on my back porch. I see it from my breakfast table. And uh, I, I, one of my most joyous things is, is in the wintertime is the robins, there'll be a, like a dozen robins. <laughs> and they're all just, just love my water bath. And you can see the steam coming off. And they, they, they'll stay there all day long. And then occasionally they'll they'll leave for a little bit and the cedar wax rings come in. And they take their place. And they also love the water bath. And so you I get more in the wintertime I get more mileage out of my water bath than I do my feeders. It's just really exciting. Uh, and the, the cedar wax rings uh, come and go. They they tend to the cedar wax rings are also berry eaters in the wintertime. And so they often hang out with the robins. And they'll they'll drift around in the neighborhood looking for good berries. You know, so. robin, robins go around with their head cocked like this. That's because they're ground feeders, but they're also mono, I can't do it. Mon mono vision? Yeah, and so um, they can't, that, that, It's that's not stereoscopic. <laughs> it always has his head down every time. Most birds are like that. Yes, these are the past. Stereoscopic vision. Stereoscopic vision. Yeah. But <laughs> when they're ground feeders, that's the habit that's why they have little heads. Right, people talk about them and they're listening to the word of word. Yeah. 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 Right. Um, yes. I have a question. In Iowa, we have a lot of cedar wax. That was a high bush candidate or something like that. Yeah. 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 Y
So what's going on? But that doesn't grow here very well, I believe. So what is, I don't seem to have get very many. Well, you know, one thing they one thing they really eat is uh, printed berries when they're when they okay. reach a certain place. You know, limits, I'm not sure what limits. So there's a lot of berries that they'll eat. Yeah, juniper, juniper berries. They'll eat that awful when, when you have cedar <laughs> wax wings, the first thing, if your if your hearing is good, the first thing you'll hear when a cedar wax wings yeah. in your yard is this. It's higher than that. Yeah, it is. It's real peaky. I know immediately when it's here. Okay. Now, some of us can't hear it anymore. I'm probably, that's when, you, when your hearing starts to decline, the first thing that goes is the seat of Russia. Okay. That's a shame, but it's true. That's a chance. It's true. I've, lo I've lost that. And, and another one that you lose is the black and white warbler. Uh, but my, luckily, my wife Donna still has a good. <laughs> um, the, the robin, by the way, is a is a is, is a very vocal singer in the springtime. Uh, they have a very sing-songy call. Uh, if you bird book, you know they use uh, as you probably know they use words to describe calls. And it's uh, for the robin. If you look in the bird book, it will typically say cheerio, cheerly, cheery up, uh, tut tut tut, intermixed. And it, it's a it's re it's a very aimless call. Um, it's, it's, it sounds like it's constantly being improvised. It's like a, like. feeding and a few things at the end too. But um, let's, let's cover a couple other um, birds. You know, just real briefly, the, the cardinal is something everybody knows. Um, and the cardinal, once again, uh, there's a different behavior in the winter. Uh, they do, if you ever noticed in the backyard, there'll be uh, eight male cardinals. Yeah. You know, uh, you would never see that in the summertime. There's a very strong territorial behavior in the summertime. It's because you've got a different batch of cardinals. Just like you have different batch of robins, huh. and uh, they they have uh, they have banded together and they're feeding together. They're in a winter flock, and um, so they, they find that advantageous in terms of foraging for food. Um, the cardinal is uh, of course year round, um, very familiar bird, and uh, its call is beautiful. It have a lot of variations in their call that moves. It, it changes from one week to another all spring, and uh, I've been trying to. Un uh, break this code for many years now, uh, but I'm constantly surprised by it. But it has a little assortment, and you'll notice that all the cardinals in the neighborhood are singing the same song at the same time, but then it'll shift to a slightly different song, and they keep doing that together. Um, the one of the a typical did that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like what you hear, what you hear? Or, pretty bird, pretty bird. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. And uh, very brilliant call. Uh, sometimes uh, it's better 
to, to tell a bird's call by its tone than it is by the song itself. Because they also have like, you know, very, it's a whole different melody, but it's still got that real strong, vibrant tone that only, the only other bird that can challenge it would be the wren. Why is it called northern bird? Or the maybe it's Why is it called northern when it's all in the south? Don't ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I have a cardinal, or maybe more than one, that pecks my windows like crazy, okay. and it drives me insane. And he disappeared for a while, and I wonder if he's back, or is it a new fella? And those are like sand. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, that's a great question. A lot of people, you know, most of the backyard, it's different for every species, but a lot of backyard birds, uh, their lifespan in captivity might be seven years. In the wild, it's probably more two or three. Uh, it's very dangerous out there. Uh, you know, it, it, all kinds of uh, weather events can kill them, uh, or, you know, cats, uh, or, you know, Lord, uh, disease. Uh, so birds, you know, Two or three years is probably average for a songbird, but whereas they certainly can live five to six years if they're lucky. They say though he's, he's attacking this bird for his territory. He sees himself in the window, and he does that. And well, he sees I, me too, and I haven't scared him off yet. No, <laughs> I, and I have. I, I've never really gotten any read anything that uh, explains it completely. I've hunted for things for the merrick's to cover their windows with. <laughs> we did solve our problem. We have this cute kitten and we put a cat tree there and somehow that cat moving, it's like he's like, I don't want to attack the other red bird because the cat will eat me. I don't know. That's he clever. Yeah, you really did stop it. So. People tried everything. I, that's a constant problem. But it's just they just don't understand the reflection. Uh, house bearer, I don't need to spend too much time with that. The house bearer is it is a it certainly will come to the backyard, my mom's yard, never my yard. Well, no, I have one. I have one. Uh, but uh, they don't, they tend to like a little more open area. This is the, you know, the house bear is most commonly seen walking around in the Walmart parking lot. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an invasive, of course, brought to America almost 100 years ago. And now they're everywhere, just like the starling. And, um, and house, well, the house is just like different, yes. Is that the bird that builds its nest on my house? It could. They, they build in the eaves. They, they're uh, cavity dwellers. They like to build in, in like, where the, yeah. In the, uh, it's like, it's like the goldfinch, that's year-round. That, you know, they, they, in the, in the wintertime, they're very drab birds. Um, uh, they, they, like, they eat thistle. So if you, that's a, if you get thistle feeder, you know, the skinny feeder with the niger in it, that's how you're going to get goldfinches. Uh, in the summertime, they turn into these beautiful yellow bird, yellow and black birds, canaries. You know, they're just incredibly vibrant birds. Um, they're, they, uh, they're noisy. Their, their, their song is, is a very complex uh, song that I can't possibly reproduce. But they, but they, uh, it's a, but they have a, a call note that's more familiar. Uh, you don't hear the song except very early spring, and. Uh, but, in, but the, uh, the the chip note or this I mean, the call is that you hear a lot. I heard it a lot today in my mom's yard. Uh, is a it's a whistle, but like that. And sometimes the right it's a little faster than that. I can't do all the calls accurately with my mouth. I have the recorder here uh, if I want to make uh, additions, but on the. Um, it's not really known for its by its call. When it flies, it goes choo, 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 choo. And they make these little chipping sounds. The house finch, um, that's a, a kind of a strange, that used to be a, only a western bird and then it was uh, introduced to the east in the early 20th century and it spread its range and now it's in all, 50, all uh, 48 states. The reason it was let loose, it was used as a, a caged bird because of its color and its song and stuff. And then they made the laws that they couldn't cage it anymore. So there it is, all over the states. The house finch is another one that changes its plumage uh, dramatically uh, from winter to, to summer. Um, it's in the summer, in the wintertime it's drab, just like the goldfinch. Uh, and in the summertime they'd be in brilliant red parts on their front. And uh, some of them are quite striking. Um, 
It's, I'm a little bit worried about the House bench. It's, it's uh, relatively explosive, uh, I think you might even say. I don't know, I'm not a scientist, and I don't really know the, the, the data, but it is definitely on the march, you know, and uh, it could be a bad thing if it, it goes too far. Uh, they already have uh, real problems with conjunctivitis uh, outbreaks in the, in the house pinch population. Um, you'll see them occasionally at your feeder that have damaged eyes. Their eyes are kind of closed. And they're going, and it's just really sad. And you're not supposed to, I, the first time I saw one, I tried to save it. And uh, I was recommended and told that that's not what you're supposed to do because that's uh, fighting the genetic pool in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So it's like people with viral or is it? I guess so. I mean, so since I had that, we had a whole bunch of them one summer. Yeah. And I haven't seen it like, as much lately. Right, like, this year, but, to, but I mean, should we clean our feeders? That's the, 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 the exact thing. Cleaning the feeders is the, is the ticket. Uh, you don't want it to spread. But you don't want to save that bird because it needs to go out of the gene pool. Not a happy thing. Okay, Carolina wren. I love the wren. The wren is a busy little guy. Uh, we do have a, a Carolina wren nest, typical of the. Yeah. They love to build nests. Uh, they, their song is described as the tea kettle. Uh, sometimes the three syllable thing. It's, you'll hear a lot of that. Many infinite variations on that. It's just like, it's really maddening. Uh, but I'm always surprised. If there's ever a bird that I, I go out there and go, what is that bird? What is that bird? What's well, Carolina man. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I've been uh, doing bird calls for a long time, I, I, occasionally I still get tricked by Carolina Wren. They're, they're real, it's a real voice, loud, penetrating song. Once again, best known for its tone quality. Um, so clear. It's very clear. It really breaks through. What, so, what about the house wren? How do they relate? Oh, yeah, thank you. House wren, you know what? That's one that I really got to use my recorder for. You had a lot of those on the back fence. Yeah, and that in that house. Because I cannot make that sound. And it is a bubbly sound. It's a, I'm glad you mentioned that, Joe, because it's a really good song. It's easy to hear. I had, I had a mailbox that they built in and she had one brood and then she built and added to it and had another brood and then she was working on it and I, t I had a lecture i went out and i said listen i'm calling the plant parenthood <laughs> you go through with this again <laughs> this is a this is the song it's a See why I don't want to do that. It's, I think of it as a bubbly, a bubbly song. Is that, whatever works for you is what you need to think. What, what make, what, how do you describe that? What do you call it when they action things? Fussing. Fussing. If they have a nest in Gosh, you go toward it, or you don't even know you're going toward it, and all of a sudden, every wind in the area is fussing. Well, the Carolina wind has a fussing call, which is. And it's just like a real annoying little thing. Well, it's like a buzz. Strangely enough, that same bird that's going. <laughs> is also going. But I don't associate. The, um, the house man is a fusser. Uh, I, I mean, they're less interactive. The Carolina man is the one that's really interactive. It's the one that's on you, you know. Very, very people are here. Yes. Can you do whale songs? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. 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 Okay.
the cabin up where our Beaver Lake cabin, you know, the quail used to be something you heard all the time. All in, you know, in, 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 I haven't heard one there in years. And uh, so that's that's not good. It's a habitat problem. Um, so what we got to do uh, Blue jay. What family is the blue jay? Crow. The crow. It's a corvid. It's a, that's really important to remember the crow. The blue jay, even though it looks nothing like a crow, it is. That explains everything. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, it explains it's why it's so aggressive. It's far more intelligent than the other birds. Uh, it, has a, it has a vocabulary. It's not a song. It's a vocabulary. They're actually a list of, of sounds, and they all have a, a certain meaning. And it's not just aimless like a you know other birds just make this sound. It's, it's, it could be territory. It could be. Uh, it could be uh, that they're trying to defend their territory, or it could be that they're trying to find a mate, but they're using the same song to our ears. This bird's not like that. It has a, a tremendous vocabulary. And, uh, if, and everybody, some people hate them because they eat eggs, and the, how many of y'all eat eggs? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, also just to remind you that- I don't eat baby birds. And, well, you know, but here's another thing about this bird is it's been around for millions of years and things work out pretty good. You know, so don't be too concerned about all the meanness that's going on in the backyard because this is part of the, the balance. Just like a cowbird, you know, the eyed sad, uh, you know, that it's laying its eggs in other body's nest, but that's just part of the, the balance. And, we, and, and I have, personally, I love these guys, they're fascinating. Yeah. Are those some of the birds that? The eggs from another bird's nest out and then puts it on in there? No, that's, that would be the cowbird. And the, the cowbird is a, is a parasitic nester. Uh, by that, it, what it, it deposits its eggs. I have, I have a bluebird nest that actually shows the cowbird nest in it. Um, the bird, uh, I'm sorry, the egg in the, the mother will um, try to raise them all, and the, the cowbird, being a larger species, will often kick the other babies out. And, or dominate the food that comes in. It's the most aggressive, and so the other babies die. It sounds cruel. It's been going on for millions of years. Is this yes. Did you have some? Yes. Uh, you said the blue jay has a uh, large vocabulary. Does it say pretty, pretty, pretty? No. no I wouldn't hard describe hard. that as one of its calls. You know, the blue jay's vocabulary is worth listening to real quick. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and, and, and mind-boggling how, uh, how... I think they're fun, the Blue Jays fun because they get together in the backyard and start talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the crows. That one, mm -hmm. ask the crows. Yeah, the crows. They were discussing my neighbor the other day. Listen, some, some of the crows again, uh, some of the, the, it's amazing how the virtuosity of the, the Blue Jay vocally is quite, quite astounding. Again, I'm not a scientist, but the bird, the bird flu uh, is focused on the corvid family. So that would include the magpies, blue jays, and the crows. Um, somebody mentioned the mimics, uh, the, the mockingbird. How many, what are the other mimics? Uh, everybody knows the mockingbird. What are the two others though, in our backyard? Brown thrasher, Brown thrasher. and 
Catbird. My favorite. Okay. Now, I wanted to um, talk about those a little bit because uh, the Catbird is my favorite. And the Brown Thrasher is my dad's favorite. And uh, um, yeah, the Mockingbird, there's another one that a lot of people don't like because they're aggressive, but, but that's their nature. Uh, it's real easy to tell those three bird songs apart. Um, the, the Mockingbird, of course, is well known for their virtuosity, but actually, it's got the smallest repertoire of those three mockers. Okay, um, it's it's always sings its songs three or four times. So that that's the key. You'll hear it be like. And you just go, every, or sometimes four, but they're always in these sets. Um, and by the way, the mockingbird is a, what, what does it eat? Primarily. Well, at least a couple things. It's first of all, I should Berries. 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 <laughs> one. Loves berries. Uh, uh, it also eats insects. And uh, they're kind of versatile, but berries is favorite. Uh, I love that these to when my service berry would bloom. They, they is the mockingbird the only bird that will mock you? You know, I yeah. whistled at them and they'll match it. They, uh, there's a lot of t talk about them matching uh, local sounds. Uh, when I travel, it's real easy to hear uh, the variation. The mockingbirds in each state have a whole different repertoire. Um, and it's, so th it is regionally based. And it is true that there's lots of reports of them doing cell phone sounds. And, uh, I heard uh, our... Urban sounds. Yeah, I had a um, peach face lovebird. No, the uh, well, I raised them, but the mother was the last of the of my lot. And yeah. um, in, in California, she could live outside in the summer. And um, the mockingbird, it was like all of a sudden she had a friend again. Oh. You know, he'd come by a couple times a day and and talk to her, and she'd talk back. <laughs> well, down south, the mockingbird says you all in their songs. <laughs> I like that. So the brown thrasher. Now that's a, the brown thrasher is a real treat. In the in this early springtime, the brown thrasher will emerge. And by the way, the brown thrasher likes a lot of cover. So if you got too much uh, manicure going in your in your lawn, you're not likely to have one. Um, they need a lot of cover. They like the edge of the woods. Uh, they're typically on the ground, um, and they they sing all of their songs twice, very briefly. So they're in pairs. You know. Yeah, everything's in pairs. And the catbird, that's another, they, they call that the catbird a skulker. Uh, skulking is a, is a nice word. It's, it, what it likes is a real, real intense thicket of honeysuckle and privet and all the just wildness. Of just a, it likes that real thicket of, of growth. And uh, it, they don't like it to be too cleaned up. They're kind of secretive birds. And um, they also like berries and insects. Um, they will, and their, their song is they sing everything just once. And it's all strung together. There's almost no pause between the different songs. And they sing a little more than, the, uh, a little longer than the Brown Thrasher. The Brown Thrasher, very disappointingly, seems to finish its whole singing cycle in about two weeks, maybe three, which is very disappointing because it's, it's gorgeous. The mocking, and the, the, the Brown Thrasher, I mean, I'm sorry, the catbird is a migratory bird that is absolutely not here in the winter except a couple of times. There was a couple of sightings. But they, 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 come, they arrive in the spring, and when they arrive, they're singing. It's beautiful. It sounds like, kind of like this. Uh, yep. They have the largest repertoire, repertoire and they say there's up to 1,500 different sounds. The brown thrasher is around 250, mockingbird is somewhere around 125, 150. So, um, wonderful birds. Um, I know. The white breasted nuthatch is an important little bird that's in all of our yards. Um, uh, that, that has a very unmusical call, but it's very easy to hear. That. <laughs> that's a good one. The the tuft and the, by the way that's a, that's year round but in the, in the a real prize for a backyard birder is to observe the red breasted nuthatch in the winter time and certain certain winters they uh, they're quite prevalent and they like to come to the theater um, so I love that when they happen uh, the oh, what is it? 
the chickadee. Everybody knows the chickadee dee 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 dee. But I want you to also listen for its song. The chick that's the call note. The, the, that's, a, that's not a song. Birds have songs and they have calls, call notes. Sometimes a call note is just it. So. Like a cardinal doing that. But the chickadee does have a beautiful song, and it only sings it when it's in that kind of breeding mood. And it's a very beautiful piping song. Goes, Usually four syllables. Real high. It reminds me of the tone quality of one of my favorite singers, and I bet you all know this one, the white-throated sparrow. Yes. This is a bird that it, almost all winter long is on the ground underneath your bird feeder. Not likely to be on the bird feeder, but on the ground. And they have little white underneath their chin. And they sing this song that all of us have heard, but probably didn't know what it was. It's so gorgeous. It goes like this. See the Tufty Titmouse? That's a that's a very, very you know, all year long resident at a bird feeders. Um, and uh, it has a beautiful, uh, very vibrant song. It has two different songs primarily. Uh, one is it goes quee quee quee. How do you spell that? P W E H E quee quee. And it's not like this. And also this one. Sounds here. Except when Peter, that says Peter. Another one, the Peter Peter is how they play. The, uh, the, the woodpecker family is real hard for me to imitate, but I can kind of help a little bit. Um, in the, in the, the red belly, the most common sound the red belly makes is this. And, and it's like. Red-bellied woodpecker. The uh, the downy is a little bitty one, and of course the hairy is the larger version of the downy. Virtually identical except in size. The downy um, that's a hard one to make it sound. It goes pick, pick. I don't have time to play the thing. But it's it kind of a whinny, like a horse whinny. Like that. It descends. I can't do it justice. The, uh, the northern flicker. Now that's a bird that, uh, that's a ground feeder typically. Uh, it's, got, it's a very different kind of woodpecker. It likes suet, but it's naturally a ground feeder. Uh, their numbers are declining, uh, especially in the summer. In the winter time, they flock together, strangely enough. Woodpecker flocking together. They, they're in groups of like six to 10, and they'll feed in lawns. You'll see them in a grassy lawn. And sometimes it's really easy to overlook them, but there, you know, there'll be like six of them walking around the grass. Um, Is that the yellow chef or the red? The, 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 the yellow chef and flicker in this region. We can see both. The, the red chef is a western, but the same species. Yeah. Okay. I used to think it was two species. Um, it, it, it's, its main call is clear, clear. And it goes whistle. It goes, I can't make the sound, but it goes, on a singular note, it just goes clear, clear. <laughs> okay. And uh, the red, I, I don't really think of it pollinated as a, a pileated, you could say it either way. You know, that is a backyard bird, but if you live in a you know, forested area, you'll get them. And they, and they have that beautiful, they sound like they're from the Amazon basin. You know? It sounds like wicked, 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 yeah, they sound like you'd expect a giant woodpecker sound. You, know, you should have seen it on the sound. feeder. We had a feeder that was about this big around, and here this big pileated or pileated woodpecker was holding on upside down like this, and you know how long their beaks are, and he was sticking his beak through the top part of the feeder. It's the only way he'd get the food, but he hung there upside down like that for as long as he could get the 
Sure. So the black oil sun flowers out. Right. And then off you went. We're going to talk about a little bit more briefly. We're going to talk about feeding in a minute here. We're almost through this list. Not, oh, not quite. Uh, the, the dark eye junco and the, the white throat sparrow, I think of them as a, they're our ground, our, our winter ground feeders. And both of them are going to be on the here. You won't hear any noise from the dark eye junco. Uh, they don't sing. They make little, little tiny calling notes. Uh, that's because it's winter. You know, they, all, most of the birds don't sing in the winter. I want to make sure that there's one of the most astounding facts that, I, that, that is that did you re I, I wonder if you all realize that the, the, the females don't sing the songs. Except for the cardinal. The cardinal is one of the, I think, the only North American bird where the, she sings the song. But the rest of them, the, the females are relegated just to call them. How that ever happened. Um, but, uh, but strangely enough, the white throat sparrow does sing in the winter. Um, almost all winter long, you'll, you'll hear that. Send what he like. Um, I think we have we kind of made it through this. We must have missed a couple of things. Uh, the bluebird is only going to occur if you have some open area in your yard. I don't have any bluebirds. My mom does. Uh, the bluebird has a most unspectacular call. Uh, you know, people kind of romanticize the bluebird, but its uh, its song is not to me something that is it doesn't do it justice. It's it's a real drab call. It kind of sounds like this. It's a gentle call. Yeah, they're having trouble because they're not aggressive, and there's several people that like those. That they're a cavity dweller, and you know the the English sparrow and, and it is a, I mean the house sparrow is a lobby to get their hole before they house wren. house wren. So that's a, that's a problem. I've had you know, good success in my backyard with two boxes. Keeping yeah. the, as long as I tear the sparrow's nest out religiously. Yes. I get. Two families of bluebirds every year, and they have at least two groups. That's nice. All the cavity dwellers are having a hard time. They're having to adjust. Quite a few of these are cavity dwellers. You know, even like the, the chickadee and the titmouse and the, the white breasted nuthatch. Um, there's an amazing number of, of cavity dwellers, and most of these birds are not capable of drilling holes in a tree. They have to use something that pre exists. And uh, humans have this nasty habit of cutting down anything after it dies, right? Mm -hmm. That's really been a problem. I yes. down. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about let's talk about the uh, uh, habitat in your backyard briefly because uh, we're going to run out of time and I, they're just you just I, I can do this all day long but I think I'll get back. I have one bird that I used to live in Central Arkansas and never saw before I moved up here. Yeah. And I taught in Springdale for 13 years, and every year I would see the scissor tail flycatcher mm -hmm. and they've sitting been. on the side of the road, and I almost ran off the road the first time I saw it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I was going, what? You know, and that's it. One, one really beautiful thing is the scissor tail flycatcher is on the move. They are really so doing good. And uh, I see them now downtown at big intersections. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they they really are expanding their range. They used to be much more prevalent in the open prairie in Oklahoma and stuff and now they're just everywhere and that's really good that's a, that's a bird that's doing well there's been a lot of movement in bird it's not a static thing it's always moving uh, it's climate change and, uh, all, and habitat changes a lot of birds in my lifetime like the fish crow have you ever noticed that now we have two crows and we used to in the summertime we have a new crow show up called the fish crow they look exactly alike but they sound nothing you know, the, the, the American crow, which we all know, you know, crow, crow, among a hundred other sounds, um, the fish crow has this very kind of like a baby crow thing. Like, <laughs> so that's just like a fish. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, some people think, oh, oh, oh no, no, like, um, let's, but I'm gonna, you know, I have a, my mom and I both have. Work real hard on both of our yards uh, to to attract birds, and uh, it's true. It, uh, I heard a conversation before the, the, this event about uh, you know, planting good bird-friendly species. That's very important. But what I think is even more important is the arrangement of cover in your yard, and uh, and uh, or lack of cover. 
and the kind of feed of uh, my, my own yard, you know, partly just because of where I live, is a lots and lots of cover. Uh, I don't have any trouble with aerial predators because they're, they're, they're plenty of, they, they, they're, they can't get in there quick enough before everybody sees them and they're all, whereas my mom's yard is constantly being swooped on by a sharp shin hog uh, uh, because it's, it, there's plenty of visibility out there. But she has a, like, a nice mixed habitat. Um, there's nothing, I, I can't emphasize the joy of having a water feeder enough. And there's a, a heated water feeder. You might think that's a, a exorbitant, but it's not. It is, it is not, because you have to keep it from freezing somehow. On Amazon, it's 5646. <laughs> I just absolutely love mine. It takes a little bit of work every two or three days. You, you, I take it off of there and take it inside and scrub it off, get the algae off, and I put it back out there and put a couple of pitchers of water in there. Uh, it's, a, it's a lifestyle thing, but once you make that decision, I guarantee you, it pays off. The, the birds absolutely love it, and I, I, it's very important that you put it close and where you sit, wherever it is in your house that you sit, make sure it's in good good view so that you can really enjoy it to the moment. And that goes along with your feeders too. The one um, we have mounts on the railing. So it's pretty easy to mount. It mounts onto a two by six railing. I have, we have, I had 40 of these made. Uh, so uh, don't, couples don't take two of them. That's these good. are These are the feeders that Kelly and I have and the cost of on Amazon, which is really a lot. Yeah, of are feeders good or bad? I think of food stamps. Okay. You know, that's all. <laughs> you know what? I, that's what you, you just raised it. Yeah, I mean, it's dependent on you. And if you stop feeding them, what happens? Let me, let me, uh, let me, I've asked that question to the people that I respect the most. And uh, I've got, uh, the answer I get from, like, Joe Neal, who's a good, Joe Neal happens to live a block from me. And uh, so, uh, and we're good friends. And he, he says, feed away. Uh, and I worry about the, uh, the fact that all the, the babies are learning to eat out of the feeder and like, what are they going to do when they get into the real world? You know, um, these are good questions. All I know is that I, I keep asking these questions and everybody says, feed away. And I don't think you're hurting anything. Uh, you know, the fact is, Human beings are incredibly invasive on the bird population already. Everything, your house is a problem for them, your parking lot. Everything that we do is damaging the birds. Uh, maybe feeding is a, a way of paying back, uh, you know, helping to counteract all the things that we do that damage birds' uh, ability to thrive. Uh, and I just get so much enjoyment out of it. Now, I have a mix of three different kinds of seeds, four different kinds of seeds, all the time available. And it, it does cost quite a bit. One of my mixes, is a woodpecker mix that includes uh, various fruits and all kinds of assorted seeds that are already out of shell. And it looks like it would be perfectly good eating for a human being. <laughs> and I enjoy it because it, it changes my, the mix of birds. And then of course sunflower seeds, black oil sunflower seeds are, are the standby. But if you have nothing else, that's the one to have. Millet is not preferred by most of the birds, but there's a few birds that like millet if you have a, enough room for it. And then thistle, if you want to have gold pinches. Also, I didn't put on here, another one I could have put on winter is pine siskin. The pine siskin is a lesser known little bird that uh, almost looks very similar to a goldfinch, kind of hard to, to identify, but uh, they also like the thistle. So uh, thistle will increase your range a lot. Uh, this paper that my mom is, is passing out, talks about the Duncraft design feeder. They're kind of expensive, $75 or something, but they are squirrel proof. Yeah. And they will last you for many years. And I, I would highly recommend making that investment in a Duncraft uh, squirrel buster. I have two of them in my yard. Donna, I, Mom has several of them. They're very reliable, they're worth the money. If you buy something lesser, it may not work, uh, and you'll just have wasted your money. But uh, I know squirrels are a continual problem, uh, and we can get on with that, but, but the duck craft is one way to get around that. Okay. I, I made it. Well, everybody took one, and I've been mad at this, 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 is, this is kind of a, it's, it's almost distressful to me. There's, uh, we, we just barely open the door on this. And uh, it's hard to know in one hour where to put my priorities. And, you know, and uh, so what, what I'm hoping y'all got out of this today so far is that 
is the, the knowledge that there's a difference between winter and summer and the behavior changes. And the way this, so many of these species, they in the winter time, they go into this group behavior. And they start moving around foraging in groups. And this is kind of the, some of the joy in, in, in observing your backyard birds is starting to observe those kind of little details. Uh, it's not, they're just not out there. Actually, there's, instead of just two cardinals, there's a whole bunch of cardinals in the winter. Or another thing I'd like for you to be watching for, and it's still going on right now, is the, the, the feeding of the babies in your yard. Um, sometimes we, we forget, I, mean, I, I want to make sure that you realize that a baby bird is the same size as the mom and dad, and in some cases has got virtually the same plumage by the time they've left the nest. Birds are not like almost every other animal in the world. They, they, they mature extremely fast. And, but the way to tell them apart is if you see this, this twittering of the, of the, of the, the wings. <laughs> and sometimes the mouth open. But there's this quiver with the wings. That's a baby bird. Unless it's a cardinal. A female cardinal goes. <laughs> Yes, if we did. Why are my cardinals bald right now? Oh, that's that's a. Oh, I was going to talk about that. Oh. Yeah, they're they're molting. It looks so awful. I have one that has nothing on their head. I have several that have nothing on their head. And he has feathers up here. And, oh. and it looks like this gorgeous a row around his But they're not sick. Okay. They're just molting. Kind of disturbing to look at. And I don't know why all of them don't seem to look ugly like that. But some just <laughs> really look ugly. <laughs> yeah, did you have, yeah. Well, I had a cardinal that was being pursued by two other cardinals, and they were attacking him. And the school ahead was there, and I was like, huh. oh my goodness, they pull all his hair out. <laughs> um, I don't know. I doubt that, but I don't know. the behavior, they're just running him out of town. Yeah, that's territorial behavior. In the summertime, you'll see the birds chasing each other a lot. And uh, they are very, very, ter every bird has a, is very territorial. Um, in the, in, the, in the breeding numbers. And now, by the way, they're, they're, right now what has just happened is they, you, you're, if you're seeing baby birds in your yard, you're seeing round two. Uh, when the weather's appropriate, they'll, they'll you put out two broods and in, in a few cases, three in one season. So in my yard right now, I've got baby blue, blue jays, baby cardinals, baby uh, house finches. Um, and I just recently had the catbird babies were just finished up. I really enjoyed watching that. Uh, by the way, I have a, 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 I didn't talk about yet about suet. Suet is a, I love suet. That, that really adds to your, your, the number of birds that are coming to your backyard. And I have a, my suet placed in a very carefully, in a, in a maple tree, I have it so that there's a little limb right underneath it, right beside it. Some birds like um, woodpeckers and nuthatches are designed to to hold on to the side of things. And a suet feeder is no problem for them. But there's a bunch of birds that like suet that are not designed to latch onto the side of a, of a cage. And so they need a perch. So what I have, amazingly enough, with my suet, this spring I had a pair of summer tanagers every day in my backyard. I have every day mockingbirds, brown thrasher, Catbirds, cardinals, strangely enough, eating suet because they can stand and eat it. And of course, you also get the nuthatch, and you get the wren, and you get chickadee. Other, a lot of birds, the they, meat, birds they're that like meat. There are perching birds, and there are birds that are, that cannot perch. And so we don't have time to go through mm -hmm. that. But right. feeders, you need some platform feeder as well as some that can hang on to. The problem with a platform feeder, and I don't have one in my yard, sadly enough, and the problem with a platform feeder, it is almost impossible to keep squirrels away from them, unless you're lucky enough to have, like in my yard, there's no place where a squirrel would not leap on it from the bush. But mom has a, a open area enough where she's got it on a pole with a, a, a raccoon guard underneath it, a metal raccoon guard, so they can't climb up the pole, and there's no tree close enough to where they can make the leap. So she actually, and so she's got a wonderful flat feeder that will really expand your birds if you've got a table feeder. But in my yard, I've got so much cover, I, I can't figure it out. Yes. I uh, was pruning my cedar trees and leaving stubs because I, we have owls, and the owls like to sit on the little stubby nice. branches. 
But what I discovered the last couple of weeks is that Cooper's Hawk also likes them stomachly. <laughs> they got to earn a living. Or the balance. <laughs> yes, sir. 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 How far is it? Oh, it's just right alongside it. So if this is the little uh, cage. It's just about an inch away. Inch away, yeah. yeah. And it's really changed everything. Yes? Were you going to address the question of what to do about the crackles? Oh, that, that okay. All right. Other than banging at night in the bamboo? Uh, you know, crackles, um, you know, I don't, I'm not uh, really knowledgeable about how to, uh, you, you might have any ideas on this. Uh, grackles, they, uh, if you have bamboo around, the problem is that uh, uh, blackbirds or, or common grackles, they like to roost in bamboo. And, uh, it can be, they, they can be a, a bigger problem when they swoop in and, and they're very aggressive and, and all the birds leave when they come in. Uh, I have a handful of them come in and eat sunflower seeds in my yard and occasionally they investigate the suet. Um, I know that when you feed peanuts, the, the grackles like that, and uh, I, I guess I don't have an answer for that. That'd be, that'd be something you'd have to look into. Um, it hasn't been a problem for me. Uh, they come in occasionally, and in the winter time they come in sometimes and use the bird water bath. But I would never. They don't dominate my yard. Yeah. It's a balancing act. Yeah. Does Redwood Blackbird the same crackle? No. Well, it's a black bird, but it's, black bird, but it's the Redwood Blackbird is associated with water typically, and uh, it, of course it's it, it's not the same, it's, it's a different species. It's the bird you would typically see in cattails um, from close to water. And they, they have that uh, very distinctive call, but they're not the same. Yeah, there's quite a few different, we have, there's other blackbirds. The blackbird is a large family, actually, but, but the common grackle is the one we see the most of. That's, that's what, when, when somebody says blackbird, what they mean is common grackle. Pretty big, but there's a larger one. There's a larger one, the great tail grackle and the boat tail grackle, but we have very few of those. They can be found in farmland around here. Uh, I don't know that. Yeah. I used to live where there were some resident uh, large grackles, you know, the, the big long tail. Yeah, pretty great tail grackles. Yeah. And a person across the street had a chrome uh, bumpers, you know, back when they had all these chrome bumpers, and that grackle would come up to the back and see their image and they peck that bumper to death. <laughs> they jump up and down and peck. That's interesting. So, I, yeah, we're over time already. I can, I can, I can, can I? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people are still using pesticides in their backyard. You want to? You want to talk about? We have a um, we have a question about pesticides in the backyard and how much damage that would be. Um, yeah, I'm not very knowledgeable about that. I certainly don't use anything like that in my backyard. Um, that's got to take a toll. Some of the products that people put uh, to to make a manicured grass lawn, it just I just can't imagine that that's not a big problem. Uh, I don't know the facts. But once again, that gets above my scientific knowledge, and I know that. They've tried, the ones that are, are available, they've tried to minimize their impact. I assume that I can't imagine. Well, the pollinators. Just, that'd, be a, that'd be a good thing for, there should be a whole pro program yes. on that. That'd be good to talk about. I want to tell you a quick story. I had a knee replacement for Christmas, and my brother, is that right here? Uh, my brother and his wife came to visit. And this spring I was cleaning out my garden shed, and I found a granular insecticide that killed oh. over 100 bugs that was this big and had this much in it and oh. I nearly lost my mind because right. I have a great bumblebee population mm -hmm. and I could not figure out where did this come from so I went in the house and really fretted about it this was like in March and my brother did it yes. <laughs> and I, my bumblebee population was good this year uh, but apparently my dog had a few fleas and they decided to take matters into their own hands while I was on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so I was mortified. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be a really it'd be good find to get somebody who's knowledgeable about that to talk about. That wouldn't be me though. It definitely has But uh, you know, there, we had a, a, a Jewish did it. Just for fun, we had a lot of people have been playing with this name that bird. Um, and fill in the blank with the appropriate bird. So 
for a bird that for word agurgitation, what is that? Swallow. Okay. Uh, disease of horses' hooves. Good, you got it. Okay. We didn't talk about no, we talked about it. Um, gauge of craziness. No neighbor. Both of them. Both of them, yeah. Cuckoo, living. I love the cuckoo, by the way. That is my favorite. Uh, girl with red hair. Red hair and whipper. Okay. Gone with the wind. Bluebird. Blue. That's kind of a really good thing. Scarlet Tanager. 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 Scarlet Okay. Uh, oh yeah, Prince of the Church. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and split by Lincoln. Rail. Very good. I couldn't begin to understand what split rail was. I mean, you split rails. All of us old folks. <laughs> 